This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we analyze the biggest entertainment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I have Michael and Kasumi Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa What up, what up? How are you doing? Well, how are you? I'm why great. are you looking up? <laughs> 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 Ife is the one that put in trouble, and they ask you, why are you doing what you're doing? <laughs> but we good. Yeah, yeah, we good. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> There's something you're saying that I'm not saying. It's fair. <laughs> mm. Are we good, <laughs> fair? Nah, is something good. coming ah. down? Is it from No, home? no, we're just looking. Ah, just... Oh, you didn't get it too? No, I didn't. Oh, I said it's raining. Oh. Oh, is it? Aww. Yeah, where's the place? I should be on my bed, but it's okay. I mean. Yeah, the Nigerian Immigration Service, NIS, has suspended the reposting of five of its female officers who participated in the viral Bob Daddy challenge. Um, this comes after fouls and some concerned Nigerians took to social media to condemn the harsh treatment. Falani Falan, popularly known as Faros, also wrote to the Controller General of the NIS, maintaining that the reposting of the officers was punitive. Reacting to the public outcry, the NIS, via its official Twitter handle, said the matter involving the personnel in question is still being investigated, and therefore the Controller General has directed that the earlier posting order be put on hold pending the conclusion of the investigation. When Very mouthful. When they use this investigation, like <laughs> maybe somebody died and you want to know what the person did. What are you investigating? I don't understand. What mm. is... I, mm. <laughs> Personally, I think um, this would just take me to, because um, I think we've said everything we need to see about this case and yeah, I would disapprove of um, the measures meted down to those ladies. But um, I think this too boils down to the influence of the celebrities and their social media power. So that is if they actually put their mind into a lot of things and mm. they say we want to speak against this or we want to speak for this, things can be done. Mm. But a lot of them just ignore it and think it's by posting, um, what's it called now, ostentatious lifestyle that would mm. make us... See. So <laughs> that, that, that would make us um, be like, uh, that's the life. No, do something positive with your platform. And big shout out to Files, he's been doing that. And um, he, I think he's going to keep doing that. Of course, he has a legal background. His father is um, a senior advocate of Nigeria. So I believe that he knows the mm. right paths to take. And he's taking that right path. So I think other um, celebrities should take a cue from this and mm. use their platform wisely. And now CPOT. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree because um, I, I, I don't even think it's just because he has a, a like a legal barrier because there's a lot of them that mm -hmm. you know have studied law and they mm -hmm. don't do a lot of the stuff that um, Faust gets involved with and how conscious mm -hmm. he is about like his music and his influence and things like that I've always I felt I feel like I've always crushed over people or celebrities that go a little more conscious in everything that they do. Um, if it's the way you write your lyrics or how you live your life or how you use your influence and privilege. Mm. And this is one of those things. Um, it's clear that I'm still stuck in like 60 years ago in, with the people that are ruling this country. But it's what <laughs> it is. Um, sometimes I'm actually very surprised that those are the people that are like... I don't know, why is it leading me? Like, people would Somebody watch said, that no wonder video. we don't study history no more because the people we're supposed to be studying are, are still there. Running. Yeah, I, I, totally, I totally agree to that. I think you can, a big thing for me in this story is that you can see the disconnect between the leaders and the people. Like, um, and I don't think they're trying in any way to try and mend that because if they saw that this is a global trend that was done by other um, government bodies as well, like the military in America, that's one of the strongest mm -hmm. um, bodies that you can find. Like if, if, they, if they tried their best to even try and like understand the people that they were, um, that they are ruling, and then these people in particular, I don't think will have the story, which again all reveals itself in everything that they do, that they just, they just don't care about the people. This is not for the people, by the people, blah, blah, blah. Nah, it's just a bunch of old men um, making rules and deciding how, based on how they feel like, through prejudice, through um, um, patriarchy, anything, all the biases that they feel like, they, that I feel like they have, they, are, they have that space to be able to execute that nicely without any accountability, mm. or, and, and no one can do anything about it. Mm. I still worry for the girls too because um, <laughs> this is social media talk and them trying to cover face. I don't, I don't know what is going on behind the scenes or what exactly, how they would treat these um, ladies going forward if they would get their promotions when they're supposed to get their promotions, if they would be able to move get forward their in their career, get their salary. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of things would play out this here and. 
deep down, I just wish I could say, you know what, just leave that job and look Same. for another job deep down. But I mean, job you know getting a job is another problem. And so this period, to be I just precise. yeah, I just hope that files um, would stay on it and ensure that they are treated in the best way humanly possible. I hope so. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the next story. Media mogul Mo Abudu calls out, um, calls Sky News to order on the derogatory um, title they use for a publication on their platform. The publication basically depicted African hairstyle as spiky coronavirus haircuts. Um, the threading hairstyle worn by the black women dates back to the 15th century, but the reporter had misrepresented the look with thoughts of it just starting to gain popularity in Africa. The platform has since edited the story to make it clearer that corona hairstyle was a term used by the hairdresser in Kenya. Yeah, go on. <laughs> I'd love to hear you take Spit it. Spit it out. Uh, they, I think hair for black people have been a very touchy subject because um, Hair is identity, and our identity has been very shaken from slavery and colonization and all of that type of stuff, um, from perming hair and all of that stuff. So there is a, a very, like, it, it's a shaky and tricky situation to thread on, especially when you start going into um, African and Black American communities where, you know, colonization and slavery and oppression is still very active. Um, so people don't take it very lightly when a mistake like this happens. Um, I find it really derogatory. I feel like if this was a white person that made one style, they would have still found a way to just make it look very appetizing and like, they would have called it like creative and unique or something. Um, but I felt like the title was very like, I don't know. I don't think maybe he, the person thought well enough to not avoid coming across as derogatory. I don't think that their intention was that I want to make these people feel bad, but I don't think the person did enough job to avoid that. Um, and for me, it's pretty much the same. I like that they've corrected the, the incident, and even if the Kenyan woman is claiming now that that's the name that she coined it, I, don't, I still think that, that that's not the focus. The focus isn't about Kenya or the woman, it's about you as a whitewashed um, media outlet not taking um, the, Af the African history and, uh, you know, our identity serious enough to do your research and make sure that it's factual. I don't think the person even needs to do a lot of research to find out that this hairstyle is, is not a corona hairstyle, like yeah. they had put it. It, it. it wasn't going to take anything to actually find that out. So I think this was just... Um, should I call it lazy now on mm. the part of the reporter? And I'm glad that they've taken to correction and they've corrected this. And I'm glad that someone like Muabudu um, was able to speak up on issues like this because you would expect, I mean, most of the times we, we pay attention to things that affect us directly. Mm. And it's not my business. I don't wear this kind of hairstyle. I mean, I've never seen her wearing that kind of hairstyle. Yeah. But I think she's part of the team natural vibe to a certain extent. So yeah, I like that she was able to do this and they listened and did the right thing. Mm. Are you sure you guys want to hear my take on this? Not really. I'm kidding. Because yeah. <laughs> sure. to be honest, okay, I like the fact that you, you started with um, it's derogatory and following the history from slavery to colonization and all of that. Yes, if you look at it from that angle. But like you also said, I don't think this person did it to be derogatory to Africans. So I think sometimes we tend to take things too seriously. But if we don't as well, maybe we'll give room or we'll, for, for more derogatory stuff to be done. But I don't think like... I read that story, like I read the full article. Did you read it before it was edited or after? No, I read it after it was. I read the mm, recent that's another one. Thing. Mm. So, and what I saw was that the person was just talking about this new hairstyle and how the hairstyle is called the Corona hairstyle because I think it's just a thing like people can't really go out to go do the fancy no, thing. No, it's so just extra. I know, it's I, ridiculous. I just, to me, it's just I just feel like it's a stretch. First of all, it's not an out. important story to write. Like it's so. Um, lousy. It's a lousy script. Like, but it wasn't, talking it wasn't about... intentional to be there. No, 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 no. no. no my, my point is that it wasn't a serious script. It wasn't like a hard news that you needed a lot of facts on your table and everything. You were doing a simple, a simple, I think the person simple was just feature fun. about African thingies. The least you can do, written by a white person in 2020. The person cannot tell me that there, there isn't already that like sensitivity involved. The least you could have done is get your facts straight because you know it's not too much to ask 
ask when we see it done to other races. Like if we see that you're quoting them rights, you um, give their history rights, you credit the right person, and then when it comes to people of color, you don't do the same. So of course people will say that. Okay. The problem with the, pass the passive culture, which sometimes I feel like I used to just go into because I get tired of like fighting everything. Is, is that why do we have to be passive? Like, why can't you just do the right thing so that we avoid this conversation completely? Like, why can't you just allow a person, a man with a hoodie, walk across his streets and not be attacked? Why can't you just like let the person go in the travel in the in the airport without like? Why can't you just get the name right of a heading? Like, it's simple. Why can't you? Why is it that we are now turned you now turn the table and say no? You should calm down and you should not be too sensitive and like relax. It's like it's very annoying. Okay. It's time for a quick break. But when we come back, we definitely have more to discuss. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and of course analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> Most times I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now. Wow. And that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do everybody feeling alright. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself, minimal are you? Mm. Apala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> sleeping early, sleeping early. <laughs> Alicia Keys reveals its um, difficult childhood as she shares emotional divorce letter, quote and unquote, to her father. She sent her father an emotional divorce papers when she was just 14, admitting that his empty promises affected her deeply. She went on to say she's glad that they can look back at it now as a sign of how far they have come. In a caption alongside the clip, she explained that the letter features in her new autobiography, More Myself, A Journey, end of quote. Hmm. I just want to say this just makes me understand that Alicia Keys was born the right from day one. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. the words were just well put together. That I felt mm -hmm. like this Age would be an amazing, amazing song. song as well. Yeah. yeah. So, I like that you're walking it through. And I think this autobiography is one that I would love to read. Um, there are a couple of autobiographies that I've looked at. I'm like, oh, this is barely business. You'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And there are some that I have I'm actually um, taken a step to read. And I love the lessons that I learned from it. I feel like this would be one of those but the relationship with she and her dad now you know we had had a conversation about it on this table and um, it was more like a diverging opinion but i like the the controversy this is bringing i like the conversation it is starting mm. and i like that a lot of people will pick lessons from it that would help them in their own personal lives mm. the so. last statement is like stamped and approved um, that you just made oh. about ah! <laughs> oh my approved my <laughs> oh goodness um, hey. um, about it starting a conversation not not because we've been talking about race on this table but um the black community unfortunately is one of the um highest has the highest rate of fatherless children mm. so fathers are not staying at home and it's not black as a nation as in black like race like everywhere africa america where there's a lot of black people so we have an issue at, at hand so and um i think a lot of people can relate to this um this girl um, alicia keys's relationship with her dad one way or the other some people might have healed faster or like ahead in terms of a better relationship some people are worse and some people are in the same place and things like that so i think it's really nice that she is kind of like opening up about how true the pain is because I, I one thing i don't like is when people want to like express their personal lives or fate on instagram on social media and then you come across and say yeah I'm, I'm sharing with you but you're not actually sharing anything you're just like sugar quitting and making it look really nice when we're in a great place now we think which is great but like i haven't really gained or taking anything away from the story and this direction that she's taking is so vulnerable and so like exposing like she's really showing a lot and i think that's really that would really give a, a, a space for people to heal another dynamics i like is because the father is also clearly 
on this journey with her yeah, because like you asked for permission. He was the one who kept the letter. Actually. Exactly. Yeah. So I like that he's also willing to share that because then a lot more people can gain from this. It's not just a female thing or no, you know, yeah, bringing the parents into it. So it's an amazing conversation to have um, for this particular like mm -hmm. time. Yeah. It's so amazing. Why you guys look the way you guys just turn to look at me like kilo vessels? Like, oh, yeah, it's like kilo vessels. Finally, okay, but um, I think I think it's nice that she's showing a vulnerability and um, she's showing all the girls out there that regardless of what you're going through with your parents or either your father or your mother right now, there's it's always a process and you would definitely heal. And, and it takes uh, two as well, yeah, it takes two. And right now, she said they're in a good place, but it's still good that she's sharing this bad times that they've had the sad moments in her life where she felt alone because yeah, her mom had to work long hours and she was always home alone and all of that so imagine being a young girl just with a keyboard no father around mother working long hours it's enough time for you to be thinking and then you have friends that are talking about, oh my dad did this my dad came back my dad came so imagine how she felt as a young teenager growing up and all of that and right now that she's successful they are just patching things together so this is a very good conversation for a lot of women and men out there to know that regardless of the um, rough patches you may have with your parents if you give it time you would heal and if you check it now i think it's a trend amongst um a lot of adults especially the celebrities because we've had people like kevin Hart, we've had people like drake we've had who else i think that there are a number of them mm. that had a um, very rocky relationship with their parents growing up and now they're all good so i think um just be open to forgiveness no matter what you're going through no matter what you feel like anyone just be open to forgiveness and i'm sure mm. time I also, I also like that um in telling the story she's making room if i can put it this way making room to also make excuses for the dad for the um, decisions he had made in the past there was a past where she was talking about how he's he's just not the confrontational person mm. from the get-go that um him and her mom had mm. had very separate um, personalities mm. and maybe that was the reason why they came together no, in the first place and it didn't work there is no excuse that's going to be good enough. But it's if, an <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, that's why it's an excuse, right? And mm -hmm. which is why I'm saying that I like that she's making room from that for that and not saying that oh there is no reason at all. At the end of the day, people's personality, their traits, how he was also brought up, a lot of things will also come into play mm -hmm. in this story, which is peculiar to them and how they've been able to sit down to trash it out. But you cannot just take away all the excuses, regardless of them being excuses, and just throw them away. There are also True factors that. that need to be addressed and mm -hmm. looked into in the society. I also and sometimes like you don't know what, <coughs> sorry, go on. It's fine. <coughs> Again, I need to clear my face. And sometimes you don't even know what <coughs> these parents are going through at that time as well. Like, um, I remember, um, who was it? Who was it? I think it was J. Cole. Well, no, he's not J. Cole. Don't let me say. Okay, it's Cadet. It's late now. Mm. He, he was always missing his dad and all of that. And he would promise he would come for birthdays and come for birthdays. But apparently he was a drug addict. Mm. So he couldn't make it. So sometimes you don't know what is going on in the life Th of this That's what I was going to say. Well. I think when we get, as we get older, you start to see that your parents are not as great as you. are not mm. perfect. They, yes. Like I think growing up, I think my mom was like flawless. Like, and she... I still like, I mean, oh, but I think as I get older, I'm a lot more conscious that, oh, she does have like strengths and weaknesses like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And some people, unfortunately, don't have parents that their strengths are way the weakest. And this, sorry to cause you continue, mm -hmm. but this was what Gabriel Union was also trying exactly. to say when she was saying that you cannot not, try to be perfect parents. You have yeah. to be as vulnerable as yeah. you can be that mm -hmm. would not at least scar the child. I, I think people also, when you get older, you realize that not everyone is fit to be a parent. And mm -hmm. I think that's where um, Alicia Shaquille's found her healing when she realized that this person is not going to be my dad, which is what I need. Mm. Um, but what I wanted to say away from that is that I wish she would start to talk about the traumas um, of how those things have been exhibited. I think sometimes we struggle with um, inter um, translating traumas to something. So if I was abandoned when I was a child, um, I see a lot of people displaying that in, in real life in certain behaviors, but they don't, I think they forget to connect those two things. And I think it's important that you be able to identify a source of a problem that way you can like try and help yeah. it out. I, I saw in comment sections, I mean on Twitter rather, people were talking about like whether or not that was the reason why she took this guy, what's his name, Swiss Beats from, 
a, from his family because there is a whole controversy around that and how she knew that she he was in a really was married and had children and they still had an affair and everything and somebody said something about how maybe she liked that he was present with a family like the fact that he was a family mm, man that could have been the attraction. And, and that could have been the attraction that for me is a it's not a good thing but it's i think it's a trauma on on that i could be speculating it's an angle yes i wish she would come out to like talk mm -hmm. more about that she probably won't talk about that yeah no <laughs> okay probably um, won't even admit that mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. finally um 29 year old lady alleges jay-z is um, her biological father she says her mom is suffering from neurological condition and has been told by her family her whole life that jay-z is her father and her family members are online backing up their claims she was born in 1990 in Cambridge, Maryland, where her aunt Terry Turner says she introduced her mother, Lisa, to Jay-Z. Turner claims Lisa and Jay-Z used to hook up at Lisa's sister's house before she got pregnant and gave birth to Latisha Misa. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, public <laughs> service announcement, <laughs> Jeff Bezos is my dad, but as a kid I had a skin condition that made me black. <laughs> I think that's very different. <laughs> I feel like that's so different because if you're talking about like um, biology, but in terms of like biology and features, they're actually quite, they, they, it's they a believable, like. yeah, it's a believable life for me. Because so you don't younger, think I look like Jeff? No, look at me. Sorry, look. sorry. The younger picture when she was younger, like the one with B, um, Ivy, yeah, I feel like that's a possibility. Either way, it's a, she said, I said, I said, you said. Um, but is it far-fetched? I don't think so. I think he is known for that. Um, Wendy, that used to be really There's close to them. There's a possibility, them. right? It's a very high possibility. Um, uh, I remember Wendy, that used to be, Wendy Williams, how are you doing, girl? Mm. She used to be very close to the couple and she gives tea all the time on her, on her page and she talks about that and then you have um, Beyonce writing a whole album in regards to that. So like if there was a slip up in, in, in that I would not be like extremely surprised. But that would be a slip up from the past. He's not doing it today now. Nine now. years ago. So I, I it, was think, it, it wasn't doing it today. I don't today. think she would, she should, well, she can't be. I don't be think upset, you like Jay-Z a lot, do you? No, I, 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 I don't think I don't like him, but I, I don't think past. this is something that is beneath him, is what I'm saying. Like, if you mention somebody else, maybe I'll be like, oh yeah, let's be careful. But somebody who's but known that for... Point, you know, he's, he's, he could be called a young boy. Yeah, mm -hmm. young child or young mm -hmm. teenager child, or young, young adult, boy. yeah, d living life, yeah, could and be being so, a that So that's like a high possibility for not just Jay Z, but for almost anybody. Yeah, I, it, I think the reason why it's even higher for Jay Z is oh. because he but sleeps since around. Since she doesn't like Jay Z. A lot. Have you seen him sleeping around? His wife is telling you sleeping around. Is that is that argument? Uh, exactly. But she has come out. She, she said, said that they have that not fucked. Just song. No, that she, never, that she, she never. She never said that. She did not say that. But she did. But she did say. Said, how but she hasn't that has she come out to say it as well that he cheated mm -mm. she gave your her whole life on the album anyway, let's, wait, let's, 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 focus, let's not remove from the so, 29 year old so or new. auntie now that's looking for her father um well <laughs> in, i i don't know i don't know there was a guy that came out um i think two years ago as well that said um jay-z was his father the oh. guy had it's very possible for jay-z to the have guy, the guy outside. had a strike like, that's and resemblance that's with jay-z but we never heard anything about it um, thank you for watching and do, do join the conversation on social media with the hashtag tea time or tweet at us at plus tv africa remember you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our youtube channel at plus tv africa thank you as always to go to my amazing co-anchors ife omai and ife oluo shukaye and the entire production team thank you for watching plus tv africa's tea time my name is elsie godwin do stay home and stay safe <laughs>